I am Trent Bullock, Director of Engineering for CSI. Just kind of have a variety of CIP skids here in various stages of factory acceptance testing. And so we thought it'd be a good idea to kind of do a general overview of CIP and kind of just show you some things that are common on CIP systems that continuously roll through our shop. So right here we have a custom CIP system that's based on our CIP 2.0 controls technology. This one's a fairly small uh, two tank system. A few of the safety things I like to go over on these systems is, is every system will have an e-stop on it. So if you're in a wash and something's going, going wrong, you can e-stop that and abort any washes, drive everything to a safe condition. If you need to lock up the power to do any maintenance on your CIP system, we have a lockable disconnect on the door. And then around, around the corner here, we have our OSHA dump valve to basically lock out the air. Other things on this system, this one has automatic chemical dosing for caustic acid and sanitizer. So in this case, we're using two Wilden double diaphragm pumps for caustic and acid, and then a peristaltic pump for sanitizer. Two tanks in this case, so we'll have a dedicated rinse tank and then a common chemical tank. So we'll use that tank for caustic and acid in this particular configuration. So one of the unique th things on this particular system is the, the use of the LKH Prime. We have an LKH Prime here on the CIP return. The Prime is really good when you have a lot of entrained air like you will see uh, when you're doing CIP return of, of cleaning a tank where you generally don't want a lot of liquid level. So the CIP return will come back through a variety of automated valves. We'll have conductivity and temperature measurements as well as proof of flow. So that proof of flow ensures that the entire circuit is established and we can use that for safety interlocks against steam, chemicals, things of that nature. All systems will have water supply. You could have just city water, you could have DI water, you could have hot and cold water if you wanna have a little bit quicker heat up times on your CIP. And then all systems will have multiple drain locations. In this case, we actually have both drains uh, piped to a single location, but you will have a high flow drain for all your rinse steps, and then you'll have a common header drain for draining of tanks in between phases or for maintenance purposes. So for just an example, I'll, I'll show you how simple it is to uh, start a wash on our CIP 2.0 controls. This one's already been configured for the system, so we'll just pick a simple wash here. So we'll go up to commands and we'll pick a circuit. So in this case, we're just in uh, test mode. So we'll pick circuit one and we'll say our swing connections are complete. And then you're presented with the washes you can pick. So we have five dedicated washes uh, on these systems by default. And I'm just gonna pick something simple. We'll do the sanitizer only wash. All right, so once the system starts, you can hear it kick on and you close it out. You can kind of see the status of the system. Pump is ramping up, sanitizer is dosing. So in this case, the wash is completed successfully. And so the skid's uh, shutting everything down and basically going back to an idle state. So yeah, just that easy. All right, well, thanks for spending a little time with us here um, at CSI. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. If you have a CIP application we can help you with, there's plenty of people on the other end of the line would love to talk to you. Thanks.